Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Avatar The Last Airbender episode number 70 and 80. Alright, so the previous episode. We got to know the basics of firebending. Aang met a person, uh, I forgot his name, but he met a person and he tutored Aang in the basics of firebending. Even though Aang kind of made a little bit of you know, mistakes, was kind of hasty and decided to take things in his hands without actually understanding that everything has a procedure and everything should be done step by step and because fire bending is a bit different than earth bending and air bending and also water bending uh, fire bending is a lot more advanced and he tried to kind of skip a few procedures try to like you know like hasten the process a little bit and unfortunately kind of harmed katara which in a way was uh what can i say like kind of helped katara know like you know learn the healing uh what do you call it Heal healing power which is kind of a branch of water bending at the same like you know water bending so that that kind of helped her learn that uh but you know like still like and kind of like try to do something quick quickly and uh, did not listen to his master and harmed katara like all that stuff so but anyways as i said like you know some good thing came out of it in the end katara learned the healing uh you know power quite quickly because of that and that will come in help in the future so yeah so that was what happened and in the end uh, the master and all the other villages kind of like you know went away and zhao lost <laughs> you know lost everything even did not get ang and all was also unable to capture the uh, other guy so yeah so yeah guys that was uh, that was the previous episode so let's start this is episode number 17 so uh, i'll be starting this episode we're almost at the end of book one uh the next episode uh the next week we'll have 19 and 20 which will conclude book one and then i'll start book two so yeah so yeah guys without further ado let's get started this is after the last airbender episode number 17 so yeah i'll be putting in subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started Okay, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. All right. All right. Okay, time to take off my. All right. All right, uh, the Northern Air Temple. Oh. What? What is this? It's completely out of context. Air walkers. That's not nice. <laughs> Oh, there, okay, to take, all right. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Oh. <laughs> Little bad thing.
What? Oh no, Aang is going to think that someone's alive and it might be, you know, in the end, he might be disappointed. I don't know, let's see. Or maybe there is someone who's still alive. Honest. Ah, wow! <laughs> Same thing, basically. <laughs> okay, Saka. What? Those are birds. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, those are not birds. There you go. I, I, uh, that's not airplane. That's just a prototype airplane. You know. <laughs> He's like, oh my god. There you go. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> wow, Saka has his way with words, you know? <laughs> oh my god. Teo. Come on, Ang, use your airbending to, like, you know, boost yourself or something. Oh, nice. Yeah, I can do air bending. I don't even need the glider. Oh, nice. Oh my god, now he's flexing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um... What, you just farted? <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, is he like making something? Yeah, he's... Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> oh. Oh. Damn, that seemed a little dangerous. Wait, is he not? Oh, he's, his leg is... Oh, he cannot walk most probably. <laughs> oh, dad. Yeah, he cannot walk, that means. Like, that's why most probably he is so passionate about flying. Whoa, what is this place? Whoa! It's a futuristic steampunk kind of... Yeah. It's, it's a steampunk setting or something. Okay. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, there's like... Oh, uh, the drawings. Yeah. Oh, well, it's a little sad, but, you know... Whoa. Well, it, it holds sentimental value for him, so I... Okay. What the? Yo, they're demolishing the place. Bad. Uh. Oh! Okay, Ang, you should calm down. 
You should not harm people, you know. Yeah, 112. Oh, it's a dad, okay. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, the, he got inspiration from that. Yeah, there you go. What? Yeah. What the? Oh, interesting way to... <laughs> Wow, this, this guy is... Oh, the little crabs. Hmm. Okay. This part? Oh! Okay, interesting! Yeah, like... But he'll need to come here later on after he perfects his power or something, I don't know. <laughs> what are these? Oh! Fireflies! Eco-friendly, I guess. I don't know. Oh, they're underground, that's why. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, that's why. Na natural light. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's why they, those are like plugged in. All right. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Oh my god. It should be very scary. Uh well, unless you get past the fear. <laughs> well, Momo likes it. Yeah, don't fall now.
Um, oh no! <laughs> Bug! Uh, well... Oh my god! <laughs> oh! What? <laughs> oh my god! Maybe more um, statues like we saw before. Okay. Okay, I thought he would have to wait for a little bit to perfect his strength or something, but no. Oh yeah, he's a master airbender. He he's already perfected everything. <laughs> oh. Okay, then you can actually. All right. All right. Nice. <laughs> what? Wait. What the? Is this how it's supposed to be? Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, how did they even open it? Okay. Wait a minute, how did he even open that? Um, what are the... Oh! Oh god. Oh boy. Oh god. Oh! Oh, he seems like a sensible guy. Okay, he seems sensible. I guess he did not start a fight. I don't know, let's see. What? Okay. Oh, yeah, true. Hmm. War balloon. <laughs> okay. It's like change the temperature, I guess. Oh, okay. All right. Slime? Stink bomb. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, how are the Fire Nation people going to come here? That's... Do they have airplanes or something? I think so.
All right. Oh, they're climbing it. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> well, they're in for a surprise. <laughs> wow, what are they throwing? Okay, there you go. Well, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> okay, that's intelligent. Okay. Oh, it's Appa delivering. Yeah, supplying. The contamination. Oh God. Oh. God. Okay, they're now using. Whoa, it's like a elevator. Okay, these want to do. You need to cut off the chains or something. But these are like metal chains. You can't even do that. Oh, there you go. Nice. Like that's one way, I guess. What the hell? They have an... Whoa! Okay. Wow. Excuse me. Whoop, well, not working. Where's the war? Oh, huh. where's the war balloon that? Okay. What the hell? Yo, this thing. It's like very adaptable. Okay. Water. Okay. All right. Oh, nice. Okay, now use water. I okay, there you go. Oh, wow. Okay, they're stopping, but they have a huge army behind them. Uh. Oh, there you go. Appa's here. Yeah, too many of them. Okay, there it is. Oh, what, what are they carrying? Are those slime? <laughs> wow! Uh, what are those? Sting bombs or slimes? I think those are slime. Okay, those are slime. You stink bomb, I guess. Oh. Okay. Can you use yeah some fire to light it up or something? Uh I think Saka's going to do that. Yeah. And okay. Oh oh Ah, what about the people? Okay, I think they're fine. Yeah, okay, that worked. <laughs> oh no! Alright.
<laughs> All right. Well, that worked out, I guess, in a way. Yeah, adapt and change. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Oh no. Okay, that's the end. All right. Um, okay, so this was episode number seventeen. Now, <clears throat> interesting episode here because here we actually get to see what, like you know, like the places where these air temples are, what some people are actually doing with, like you know, the empty space and how they are, you know, living in it, adapting to it. Now, obviously, I can understand why Ang felt a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning because, like, imagine, like, you know, seeing a place where you, like, you know, which was kind of familiar to you, you really adored that place, and, <laughs> like, after 100 years, you suddenly come to that place and see some other person living here, some strangers living there, and they're, like, have broken down the whole place, made stuff out, like, you know, for themselves, for their own living and completely like you know like all the things that you loved about that place all the memory like you know filled locations are all gone and like as i said again that ang is a kid he even though he's more than 100 years old he he still does not like you know his he was frozen in time so he did not have the experience, the emotional maturity that a person usually gets as they live their life. Uh, everything was halted for him. So him suddenly seeing so much changes in, the, in this place, he was unable to actually accept it in the beginning. As we see him, uh, you know, like kind of getting angry at stuff and saying that, oh my God, nothing is as I saw it was before. You're destroying this whole place uh you know making new stuff and like you know all that thing like he was really like angry at that but as they said like you know there's no one living here so obviously these people they came here they have started living here and obviously they're going to change this place which will suit their need this place is on top of a huge mountain with you know like with nothing air all around so obviously they're going to like you know do stuff which would help them actually adapt to that this place this guy started making some new airships which needed some new place to do them and that's why he changed the whole place like you know attach these type of steam pipes which helps them uh, stay afloat in this air and yeah these are all what do you call it? like ad adaptation and i think the little crabs were also kind of an indication for us to actually understand that this is just how like you know crabs adapt themselves whenever uh, not only crabs but like you know any kind of animals how they adapt themselves like uh, for example like you know uh, animals which live in water they have certain stuff to adapt themselves stuff to actually breathe underwater they have webbed feet to actually swim properly and a lot of other stuff like similar to that uh, people also adapt and these people coming here they had to adapt they had to make changes so and they like obviously they don't know what was here they don't have any emotional uh, like you know like no sentimental value attached here they know nothing about this place. they just came to this place and found such an amazing like you know uh, empty space and they started making changes and, uh, and like you know so that they can live there properly so Ang being here, uh, obviously I can understand him actually feeling everything, like you know, like not not liking the changes. 
but in the end he he understood by the end of it he understood that these people are also people they are also living here who knows maybe a hundred years later these people will actually like you know go away from here somewhere else maybe some new people will come here and maybe they will do some other changes over here like, you know they'll change this place to their living standards and this will continue like you know like nothing remains stagnant this whole world keeps moving and everything changes so that's basically what is like you know this uh, happening so <clears throat> obviously like he it took a little bit of difficulty for him to actually accept the changes but in the end after seeing how these people are also living here how they are like you know making stuff work out for them uh, doing new things he accepted it in the end and like yeah like it's, it's the best thing that one can do like make use of this place not like you know keep this place as it was in, in the past and just let it like you know rot not like that like uh, they came here they made use of this place they're making use of this place i think that's the like you know that that's the best way they can respect this place like you know make use of it so yeah <clears throat> and uh, one thing that really surprised me was the guy who he was actually uh, selling stuff to the financial i was not expecting that at all i thought like you know he made changes inside uh uh the, the chamber okay one thing i'm quite curious about like i think i remember uh, in one of the previous episode where ang opened the door there was didn't they say that only the you know airbender who what do you call it like you know who has perfected his craft can open this door no one else can or am i mistaking something um i can't remember but i i remember hearing something like that that only the airbender master airbender can only open this so how did they actually get inside like that's my question here like ang opens it and sees that everything is changed inside so that means that guy actually went inside and started making weapons there he also had a little alarm system attached to it so that if anyone opens the door it will kind of notify him so how did he open it? oh i think maybe okay i can kind of guess how he opened it because as we saw he uses steam power so maybe that's how he actually pumped air into it like you know through the power of science or something and opened the door i don't know like if you guys know let me know in the comment section so yeah and uh, All right, and it was interesting to see that Saka actually uh, is really proficient with these type of things, you know, like like these type of ideas that he made and these type of mechanical things. Like as like you know, that the guy himself said that oh, Saka is a genius. Like <laughs> like we kind of like laughed at that, but that's really big. Like you know, it's coming from a real uh, you know inventor. He he's 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 a real like legit person. Like you know, legit real good inventor. So him, him actually complimenting Saka is a really big deal. So that's quite, like, you know, that was quite surprising. I was not expecting that. Like, you know, like Saka having actual talent in these type of things. Like, you know, these type of uh, making inventions or some kind of like, you know, mechanical stuff making. Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll see more of his talent in the future episodes, you know? Maybe we'll, we'll get more, uh, like, you know, glimpses of his actual capabilities. I don't know. So, yeah and uh, what else okay one thing uh in the end that they did is like you know the when the thing crashes the hot air balloon crashes uh the fire nation people found the hot air balloon so not hot air balloon so the, the war balloon or whatever the, the it is called and the guy said something like okay like this is the loss which will pave uh so our way to the future of victories or something so oh i think maybe they're going to also going to use the same principle like they found the hot like you know the, the air balloon so maybe they'll start using this principle and make you know mass produce these type of warm balloons in the future yeah that's probably it you know because like okay let's see let's see in the end uh, when they actually find the balloon 
Yeah. Okay. I think I understood what actually happened there. Like, <coughs> probably they had no idea how to use these balloon things. So that's why they were like, you know, like I was expecting them actually going, like, you know, uh, bringing in some airplanes of stuff. So that means, like, you know, these Fine Nation people, they have no, like, you know, proper way to actually fly. They don't know how to do it. So that's why they were actually marching up the whole mountain because they had no other methods to do it. So now that they've, like, you know, saw that balloon actually flying and saw the principle what was actually making it work and they found the ba balloon, now they have grasped the way that they can use this balloon work. Like, you know, they're Fire Nation people. They can just, like, you know, light a fire under the balloon and it will, like, uh, like you know, hover up. So I'm guessing that was what he actually said, like, you know, in the end, the, the thing that he said that this will pave our way to the future victories. I think that's what he was actually meaning. Like they have a way to actually fly now. You know, like, so they can mass produce these balloons and use fire bending power to actually fly and you know, do the similar thing that these people were doing. So I think that's what they, like, you know, he probably meant that this, uh, like, you know, loss will pave our win, uh, uh, path to the victory in, in the future. I think that's what he actually meant by it. Yeah. And they're firebenders. So, like, you know, like making the fire light, light under the hot air balloon is like no problem for them. They can just use firebending to do that. They can even adjust the temperature. So, yeah. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, that was it. Uh, that was this episode. This was episode number 17. Yeah. This is episode number 17, so... <coughs> Alright, let's start episode number... Just a sec. 18. Alright, so... I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. Alright, so here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's ah uh. Oh, okay. Uh, the water bending master. Are we finally there? Are we there finally? <laughs> Wait, is he tired or something? What's happening? <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Okay, they're almost there. Oh! Oh! Oh no! Oh my god! Who is this? Is someone? Ah, the border tribe, I'm guessing. Um, that was unnecessary. I guess. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. They have the advantage of the landscape. Okay. Wow, they made everything from ice. Oh, how do you open this place? Oh, maybe, yeah, water bending. Oh, it seems as if they're expecting them. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, nice. Oh, wow, this is so cool. The way they actually, like, you know, do these things. Okay. Well, we're finally here. The Northern Water Tribe. Everything is made up from, from ice. Well, obviously it's, it's like cold here, so I guess. <laughs> oh my god, Saka. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, this is okay. I thought. <laughs> oh my god. Here we go. It's come to mess things up again. Just leave them alone, like Zhao, like, oh god. Oh! <laughs> okay, they were expecting them. Yay! <laughs> oh, that's his daughter. Princess Yue. <coughs> Paku. Oh, wow! <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, great. Uh. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, that was awkward. <laughs> Saka has great social skills. I can understand. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's going to train us. Um, <laughs> true. Yeah, this is training. Like, no, no time to rest, I guess. Songi horn. Oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's a problem. A big problem. Not a bit of a problem. Wait, what? What the hell? This guy... <laughs> oh, 
Okay, calm down. Yeah. Blue spirit. Oh, okay, they're calling him Blue Spirit. Go to hell. Wow, the control. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Well, she's not a part of your tribe, so... Oh! Well, Ank can... No, Ank can learn and Ank can teach to, to Katara. What the... Okay, let's see. Ank can master waterbending... I cannot... I guess, very quickly. Saka. Wow. Oh, it's working. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, the pirates. Oh, those pirates. Are, are they the same pirates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw them before. Okay, yeah. Is this healing? I think so. Yeah, but she wants to fight. Well, healing can also help. And if she can just learn from Aang later on, I guess. There you go, he's kind of must. Whoa. Boy. <laughs> what? Um, that's... That's... Yeah. Oh. Oh, she, she knew her mother? Oh. Oh. Oh, really? Um.
Okay. Ah. Well, yeah, they, they can't do anything. It's like higher... Like, you know, like higher orders. I, I doubt they can do anything. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my god, the pirates are doing something, yeah. My god, this Zhao is really an, like, you know, a specimen. Oh, great! Like, they took his crew, now they're going to blow his ship. Ah. Oh no. Um Okay, jump. Okay, I'm sure he realized. Okay, there you go. Oh. Wow. God damn. Ah, uh, he's fine. I, I, I think he jumped out. Hope so. Ooh, what's the matter? She looks. <laughs> okay. What? Um, what's happening? What? Uh... Yeah, like, what was up with that? Hmm... Ha, <laughs> poop head. Yeah, I was saying that. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, like, Saka gave that idea, I guess. That's... Oh. Oh, maybe not. Oh, okay. What the? What? Oh, God. Okay. This place is not I don't I like this place at all. The people here especially. Okay. Uh, no, the, she meant that. Yeah, she meant that. 100%. Yeah, so... Oh. <laughs> he did not... <laughs> Zao's thinking that he does not know. You don't know everything.
Uh, you know what? I think. Okay, I'll talk about it later. Yeah, yes. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, this is annoying. This guy is very cocky. I don't like how can a person who is a master of water bending be cocky like this? I don't get it. Or is he just acting to I don't know. Whoa. Okay, beat some sense into him. Okay. Oh God. Oh, nice. That's an interesting way. Oh! Okay. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, he's very experienced. Oh, you know what? Maybe Maybe this was the guy who's who who her grand grand was Maybe you know the, the chain the thing fell down. Maybe if he looks at it he will realize something. I think so. There you go. There you go. I was thinking. Oh, that's why he probably does not like women water bending because I'm shook. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I can understand what's happening now. Okay. The necklace falling was a big giveaway. I kind of understood everything at that moment. <laughs> there you go. I knew this was coming. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I think like that's why he does not like women. Yeah, she actually went away for water bending. Yeah, there you go. Ugh. Okay, why was she like acted like that before? Is that the reason? Oh. Oh. Yeah, what is happening? Oh. Wait, why was... Then why did she, like... Uh, I don't get it. Yeah. 
whatever. Okay. <laughs> All right, that really knocked some sense into him. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need that whack in your head. You won't learn otherwise. <laughs> uh. Yeah, my fleet is ready. Okay. Wow, this is too many of them. Okay, wow, this this was a really great episode. I really liked it. All right. Um, okay, this episode. <coughs> a lot of things initially really confused me. First of all, the whole custom of them actually, like, you know, not uh, like, you know, letting women learn. Like, that was, uh, like, obviously that was a custom. Like, no, no one can do anything about that. But the fact that uh, why this guy was so salty about everything, like, you know, this, uh, what was his name? Pa Paco or Paco? something like that like you know the the master like why was he so salty about everything like that was one thing that was really confusing me because you know usually people who are masters you know of their crafts they are kind of eccentric uh, you know most of the time but at the same time they're really calm they're non-judgmental and they are very disciplined all these kind of things so like uh like in the beginning i thought that okay like that was just his eccentricity talking you know, because in the previous episode as well, we saw when uh, Aang learned uh, the firebending from that guy, I forgot his name, you know, he was also kind of eccentric. He did not want him to learn, like, you know, teach him in the beginning. But then we actually saw, like, you know, uh, he, him actually teaching him properly and everything. Like, that's how, uh, like, you know, a, a, whatever, like, you know, a master of a craft, that's how a person should be. So I was kind of confused as to how can this person who kind of acts like a, like he was acting like a little kid by the end of it like you know he was like haha ha, like i like you know like <laughs> when they were sitting down <laughs> and like you know and katara they came uh like you know he like haha ha, i snitched like like you know like you were uh, like you know practicing water bending in the uh at night and i snitched to the main uh, like you know <laughs> <laughs> his attitude was kind of like that and then like you know again when he, like you know Qatar actually pulls, <laughs> like you know says that I'm going to fight you he he just leaves like those kind of things I was really confused I was thinking like how can this guy be a real like you know a waterbending master like he acts like a little kid and then in the by the end of it I actually understand the reason why he was like this like, you know, uh, his past experiences kind of made him like this. And he is, uh, like, you know, acting like this. He was actually acting like this. And, uh, like, you know, the moment the, uh, what do you call that? The, the necklace fell, that time it actually clicked in my head that, okay, most probably this guy was the guy who's, who her, you know, Katara's grandma was actually betrothed to and who made uh, the necklace for her. Uh, and you know and then everything actually clicked i realized that okay that's why he does not want you know women learning water bending because it like you know he has a thing in his past where her grandma probably would like you know have left this village because of this you know he like she chose water bending than being with him so that kind of is like a big thing in his past and that's why he does not want any woman want like you know learning water bending and he is very particular about it and uh, yeah like you know like <clears throat> um uh, one thing that really like as i said like you know a few things really confused me in the beginning but by the end of it everything was cleared up as i actually understood his reasoning and you know another thing that kind of confused me was him actually like you know like after getting to know that ang was teaching katara like him saying that no i won't teach you because like you know like it's their custom that women should should women should not learn water bending okay i get that that's your custom your tribe's custom ang is not part of your tribe neither is katara so if you like you know if he teaches ang and ang on his own wants to teach katara or whoever the hell he wants to he can teach it that's his own will that's his own uh, you know decision like you know like you don't have any right to actually preach that 
to him say that okay like no you can't do that because that's his own decision and neither of them are part of the north water tribe so like that really kind of like you know uh like I, I thought like he would not act like that but he really acted that way he acted like okay you're teaching him i won't teach you and like you know they brought the whole thing up to all of the the others uh like you know the princess u.s dad i, I can't remember his name and uh like uh, every after stuff like that happened like these things in the beginning was really what can i say like you know uh confusing me and i really do not understand why he was doing everything like this why was he so salty that's what basically was and by the end of it it kind of gets explained and i now understand like why he was like that and i i, I yeah I, I can't blame him but at the same time like you know uh, i don't know but yeah like i i get an like you know I, I kind of understand by the end of it and yeah i can expect accept that as a reason why he was like this <clears throat> and uh, okay that's one thing another thing that really confused me is princess Yue. now like i have an explanation and i might be wrong uh okay what actually happens like you know she actually like you know like uh saka actually tries to uh like you know talk with her uh tries <laughs> like you know he's socially uh, like he, he's very bad socially but still he tries his best to actually talk with her and invites her you know and it, it seemed as if princess Yue was also like you know like enjoying that and was quite like you know accepting like uh, in the boat scene like she laughs like you know and says that okay we'll meet you uh what do you call it uh um, in the bridge all that stuff and then suddenly at night she changes now this is what probably happened and this was not shown but i think this is what's probably happened most probably by that time frame you know like the, the time when she was actually talking with saka in the boat and by the night i think maybe he she got engaged at that time maybe that's what happened i think that's the most probable explanation here yeah. that's why suddenly at night she gets so sad and says that we should not meet yeah that's that's what happened yeah i i'm quite sure about that because now that i think about it again yeah that's what's probably happened because he was really she was really like you know appreciative about everything she was really happy like you know when saka was interacted with her all that stuff and it seemed as if she was really what can i say interested in him and then like suddenly at night she like you know suddenly changes and that's what happened like you know like in the, in the like as and i remember like you know his dad said that she's of marriageable age at that moment like you know previously so most probably uh, they were like you know going on a boat at that time she was quite happy and most probably after that her dad probably met her and said that okay like i have an engagement for you there you go this is for you this guy is your betrothed and you're engaged and yeah that's what happened and that probably did not sit well with princess Yue because she quite liked saka and that made her sad and that's why like you know in the at night she actually rejects him yeah that's what happened most probably okay i'm not confused anymore like after like thinking about it again yeah that's most probably what happened and uh, yeah and in the like you know and uh, we actually get to see that when she ex explains that i'm engaged and one another thing uh i don't know like i'm not quite sure what saka will do after this will she actually what can i say try harder like you know try to do something uh change like you know change the dad's mind and you should you know in these type of usually in these type of situations uh like in animes especially usually it's involving the main character and the some other girl you know some main the main girl but this is like two side characters here. Not Saka is not a side character. Sorry, uh, Saka is the main supporting character. You know, like it's involving them. So like I'm not sure what Saka will do here. Either he can, you know, try to. I don't know what he can even do in this situation. Uh, maybe he'll try to convince the dad. Like, you know, I don't know. Either he'll do that or either he'll give up those two are the only options left so let's see what he actually does and like you know uh, what happens in the future and uh, <clears throat> yeah that was the whole thing with Aang 
Okay, the, there's another portion of this uh, episode. The whole thing with Zhao um, and uh, Iro and uh, Zuko. So, <sighs> Zhao is a really, really annoying character. I can like say from this episode. And he was annoying before and this episode kind of proves that even more. Because what he does here, he not only tries to take, not tries, but he successfully Seize, like you know, seizes all the uh, troops from uh, uh, Zuko. He does that. Then he actually tries to blow the ship up and kill Zuko, and then says that yeah, this is my army, and uh, recruits uh, Commander Iro and says that yeah, we'll go and capture the Airbender. Wow, just like wow, like okay, yeah. I don't know and obviously like I, I knew that obviously we all knew that Zuko probably is not dead because like you know he got alerted by that parrot in the end and I'm sure like he most probably jumped out and he's a firebender he can most probably control the fire to some extent and run away at that moment so yeah and uh, like when Iro was actually like you know drinking tea with uh, <laughs> uh, what, what's his name um, Zhao, yeah, I for, for a moment there I forgot his name. <laughs> I was drinking tea with him and <laughs> Zhao was acting as if like, oh, did he know or did he, does he know or does he not know? Like, <laughs> you know, actually, like, you know, like, you know, he's a really funny character, you know, the way he does stuff. And he says that, I know, like, you know, what I, I, I like, you know, I, I, uh, no, he says that, um, I, I wonder how the Fire Nation, uh, like, you know, uh, King would react after he gets to know uh, Zuko's death and who and who's responsible for it. <laughs> Zhao was kind of thinking, oh, does he know that? And he asked him that, oh, do you know who that person is? And <laughs> this is where he kind of like, you know, plays a trick. Ero plays a trick and says that, yeah, it's the pirates. And <laughs> Zhao is like, oh, like, okay, it's the pirates. He does not know. And then he feels like, oh, I'm so like, you know, like, like he does not know anything. And he was quite, quite relieved to Zhao at that. Unfortunately, that was not what happened. And uh, at that moment, I said that I'll talk about it later because I, at that moment, I felt that this is some kind of trick that um, Iro was playing on uh, Zhao. And I was sure that somehow, <laughs> You know, was connected with Zuko. Like you know, after the whole explosion happened, I was sure that they met. You know, they met, they talked, and they're playing this trick on the Zhao to actually infiltrate and go to the North Pole. And yeah, that's what we saw in the end. We saw like you know, Zuko actually in a disguise, and uh, like you know, both of them kind of working together. So yeah, that was kind of like you know that was what I was expecting, and that's how it went as well. So yeah, this is, this is a really great episode. A lot of things we had in this episode, you know, and each and every portion was uh, important in its own way. And uh, yeah, and after that, I now I'm sure like you know the whole sp thing that we saw them fighting, Katara fighting, uh, all that stuff. Like all of the people were there, present there. I'm sure their, uh, you know, their, their, what do you call it, mm, culture, yeah, I'm sure they will kind of reconsider after this, like, you know, after seeing how Katara fought, I'm sure a lot of, like, I doubt there is no person here, no girl, no female here, who does not want to uh, learn fighting. I'm sure out of like let's just uh, approximately take a number let's see uh, um, maybe there are like a hundred females here I'm not sure how much people actually live here so this is just like an uh, like you know a random number uh, let's uh, imagine there are like hundred females you know here and hundred of them all of them like you know l are learning water bending uh, like you know healing taking the classes so I'm sure there are at least 20 or 30 female waterbenders who, who are just like Katara, who wants to learn fighting, but they cannot. So after this whole scene here, they also saw this, uh, like, you know, the fighting. I'm sure they after this, they'll, like, you know, get more, you know, motivated. And they'll also, like, say that, no, we also want to learn waterbending. And I'm also sure a lot of the higher-ups who saw this, I'm sure a lot of them will also change their mind after seeing this. 
you know and maybe some like you know the rule might change maybe the cultural i think that they have been protecting for this so long this whole thing of like females won't learn like you know offensive water bending maybe they'll change after this you know because i, I can see that they made an exception for katara so why not for the other uh, uh, villagers who really want to uh, learn water bending to fight so yeah i hope it like you know it happens like that because by the end of it we also see the master I, as i said i forgot his name again i think his name was something paco or something like that and uh, you know um, that happened uh, and i'm sure like he also changed his mind in the by the end of it and accepted that yeah like uh, i should not like you know keep clinging to my past and like you know not like hinder the younger generation from reaching their full potential just because of my own insecurities my own not insecurities my own trauma no not trauma sorry what do you call that uh my own problems you know and uh i'm sure like he'll like you know he he understood by the end of it and from the next episode i'm sure we'll see like you know him a changed person because this episode he was really acting like a little kid you know like <laughs> oh my god uh, like the way he was acting that's how like you know little kids act but yeah i'm sure he'll like you know change his mind from the future episodes and we'll change see him as a changed person another thing i kind of i'm noticing now why uh princess you suddenly started crying at that moment i when i was watching that i was unable to properly like you know understand that but now that i'm thinking about it everything at the same time i actually understand now why she suddenly started crying at that moment the the whole when she he was talking when uh the master was talking about uh katara's grand grand and saying how like you know she chose uh water bending instead of him even though he loved her so much i think that probably made princess yue like you know realize that like you know she's in the same position because i'm sure she likes saka you know but she's engaged so that kind of reminded him her of herself and i and i think that's the reason why she suddenly started crying at that moment and uh, she, like you know ran away from that place so yeah uh who knows but like that, as i said i'm not sure what saka will do after this you know will he push forward or will he give up like that's one thing that i need to you know speak for myself by the i'm sure we'll get some answers by the next episode so yeah guys that was it that was my reaction so this was episode number 18 of after the last airbender as i said like this this really was a great episode i loved each and every part of it you know it had no what can i say uh, like every part of it was important and like yeah this is this is a fantastic episode so yeah guys thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to after the last airbender episode number 17 and 18 if you guys enjoyed my reaction be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to let me know i'll check them out so yeah thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of after the last airbender so until then goodbye and have a nice day